fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust and a hearty, Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early days of the western United States. He rode from the hills of Wyoming to the mountains of Mexico in the cause of justice. His strength and courage were always on the side of right against might, and it was his daring and resourcefulness that broke the power of the outlaw bands on the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young, from out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Land's End. There's going to be trouble. Oh, Silver, hoy! <laughs> the Lone Ranger and Tonto had made camp for the night in a cave near the banks of a river. The rocky cavern was so large that Silver and Scout had been led inside. But after the men had rolled into their blankets, the horses became restless. I can't get to sleep while well. Silver's so uneasy, Tenter. Something troubling the big fella. Mm, Silver, like good watchdog. Him always give sign when trouble come close. Trouble for us or for someone near us. I'm going to get up. Well, now, old fella. Steady, Silver. What's the matter with you? You hear? Tenter. It sounded like a gunshot. Isn't that right? Come from north or cave. I don't suppose there's any use trying to investigate that shot tonight. We might have a look north of here in the morning, though. Maybe a cowboy shoot wolf. I've never heard of wolves in this section. Mm, maybe rattler. It would take sharp eyes to see a rattler in darkness like this. I don't know of any ranches around here either. The nearest town is Land's End. That's ten miles away. I'm going to have a look out of the mouth of this cave. There might be a second shot. Can't hear anything. Or even hoofs of a horse. You hear that? A splash. That's right. Something fell into the river. That sound north of here, too. There, you hear that? That's a horse. Uh, it go away from here. I wonder what all those things we just heard mean, Kimasabi. The next afternoon... Jimmy Stevens, a young manager of the express office in Land's End, was working at his desk when his wife entered the office and... Man, to see you, Jimmy. Uh, uh, who is he, Molly? What's he want? I don't know. He just said that he had to see you and that it was very important. Hmm. If only I had this job steady, I might know who was and who wasn't important. As it is, filling in sort of temporary, I don't know who's who. You'd better see this man anyway. Well, if you say so, Molly. <laughs> I don't know how I could get along here without your advice. My advice? You say that just as if you took it. I do. I take it so often that I'll bet a lot of folks would find it hard to believe that we've been married two years. <laughs> Come here, Molly. Oh, now, Jimmy, that man's waiting out in the other room. Well, another minute won't hurt him. 
Hey. Oh, it's silly. Silly? Silly for a man to love his wife? Not a bit of it. No, I'll wager my hair's all Beautiful right. as usual. <laughs> oh, you know, Molly, this job is a big chance for us. If we can show the Wells Fargo people that we can handle this office, they might let us keep the job permanent and not send a man to replace old Eve. It's a mighty big responsibility, Jimmy. And you might be keeping one of the important Wells Fargo men waiting. Now, should I send him in? Doggone, I never thought of that. I'll go talk to him. I'll bring him in this room. Oh, no, no, not with so much cash in the safe. Better for me to talk out in the other room. You stay here. If you do leave, be sure and lock that safe. I shan't leave. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. You in charge here? Well, I am right now. What can I do for you? My name is Barton, Sam Barton. You should have a letter about me. Golly, Mr. Barton, there might have been a letter. Might have been. Don't you know? Well, you, you see, the man that had charge of this office died a couple of weeks ago, and I've been in charge since then. Oh. I don't know much about the letters Abe had before he died. I was his assistant, but he never told me much about things. You're temporary here, is that it? Well, I hope it'll be permanent. Yeah, up to you, huh? Up to you to do the job right. Well, that's about it. Well, see if you're looking up the letter. Here's my credentials. You can see that I'm a special detective sent out here by Wells Fargo to check on things. There's a lot of cash goes through this office. Uh, yes, sir. The whole payroll for that railroad gang goes through here, doesn't it? Uh, yes, Mr. Barton. Take your time, look those papers over and satisfy yourself that I'm who I claim to be. I am. I hope you don't take offense. I'd think you were careless if you did otherwise. What's your name? Stevens, Jim Stevens. Glad to know you. Glad to know you, Mr. Barton. Now, won't you sit down? Oh, here's your credentials back. I reckon they're all right. Yeah, thank you. I'm a man of few words, Stevens. I'll get right to the point. Yes, sir. I suppose you wonder why I come here. Well, I figured you'd tell me sooner or later. The fact is, we've had information about a robbery that's going to be attempted. A robbery? Yes, robbery of the railroad payroll from this office. You've got a safe here, haven't you? Yes, sir. Well, this critter that plans to burglarize your safe is from the east. His name is Durkin. Durkin? I never heard of him. He hasn't worked in this part of the country very much, but he's done a plenty of safe cracking in the east. The law finally caught up with a pal of his, and this pal squealed and told what Durkin's plans were. Oh, I see. How long do you have the payroll in this office? Well, generally not more than one night. Comes in on the stage one day and is picked up by the railroad company the next. When is the next payroll due? Well, as a matter of fact, the... Or have you got the cash in your safe now? Well, I... Uh, well, that is And a... if that's the case, this crook is likely to make his play for the money tonight. How often does the payroll come out here? Every two weeks. Tonight's the night, then. I'll bet my shirt on it. It's a good thing I got here. Tonight? Yep. <laughs> Who's that? Molly. Yeah, I see him. Who is it? Who is it? Masked man. He's riding over that way. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, what does it mean? I don't know. Where'd you see him, Molly? What was he doing? I was sitting here watching the safe, and then I looked up. I felt sort of as if someone was in the room with me. Turned around, and then I saw this man's face. He was at the window. At the window? Which window? That one right there. He was standing beside his horse. He could see the safe, then? Yes, he must have been watching from that. Oh. oh you needn't worry about me, ma'am. This is Mr. Barton. He's a detective for Wells Fargo. Oh, detective? Yes. Did you get a good look at the man's face? Yes. That is, I saw his mouth and chin. The other part of his face was masked. Masked? Are you that sure was... of that, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sure of it, Mr. Barton. He had a black mask across his eyes. That's him, then, Mr. Barton. It's Durkin, the safe robber. Safe robber? Mr. Barton was telling about a crook named Durkin that plans to rob our safe. Oh, Jimmy, if you lose that money... I don't aim to lose it. Forewarned is forearmed. That's the idea, Stevens. Forewarned. Just let that critter make his play. We'll be ready for him. Oh, Mr. Barton, this is my wife, Molly. She's helping me here. Glad to know you, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, I'm afraid I'm trembling like a leaf. Beside of that masked man, I, I was so frightened. I can understand that, ma'am, but don't you worry. Don't you worry a thing. I've come a long way to get Durkin, and if he tries to rob the safe, we'll catch him in the act. Molly's father was a veteran of many Indian fights in the West. And later that afternoon, the girl told him about the masked man she had seen and Barton's plan to capture him. I don't want to take the chance, Pa. Jimmy and Mr. Barton plan to set a trap to catch this man when he comes tonight. Trap my eye! What's the West coming to? I feel this way about it, Pa. That masked man knows he was seen. He'll probably figure that there will be a trap, and it's just as Jimmy says, forewarned is forearmed. If he suspects a trap, he'll do something to escape it. Sure he will. What's more, that ain't the way to catch a crook. I thought you could help. I'll help. When I was in my better days and we seen a crook, we trailed a critter down. We didn't lay and wait for him to come and stick his neck in a noose. We went out with a noose swinging over our head, dropped it over his shoulders, and used the same doggone noose to string him up with. 
That's the way to handle crooks. That's the way of the West. Uh, I didn't tell Jimmy I was going to speak to you about this. Mm, just as well, daughter. Uh, you say this masked hombre was looking in the window at the office? Yes. Uh, which window? South or north one? South one. If I recollect, there's soft dirt there. He likely left tracks, ain't that so? Yes, he must have left tracks. Then them tracks will hang him. Wait till I get old Chris. There's a dog that can follow a scent from here to Kingdom Come. Here, Chris. Come in here, boy. Quiet down. Now quiet down, Chris. Me and you got a job on our hands. We're gonna trail safe robbers. Lone Ranger and Tonto had made their camp in the woods outside of the town. The Indian was preparing their evening meal when they heard the barking of a dog. Instantly, the two men became alert. That sounds like a hound, Tonto. Ah, him come this way. Probably trailing someone. It's odd, though, that the law here would have learned about a crook as quickly as this. Fellow on I... horse, follow dog. I'm coming this way. So he is. I don't like that. I might have to answer a lot of questions about this mask. I see you. I see you. Don't move. Him come here. That dog. Here, boy. Steady there. Steady down. I got you covered. Don't move or I'll blow your head off. There, now. That's a good dog. Quiet, boy. Steady. Chris, stop it. Stop it. Them men ain't to be friends to you. Them's enemies. Good dog you have there, stranger. Never mind the dog. Heist your hands, Dirk, and you're my prisoner. You too, Injun. That ratted, Chris. Get away from him. Is your dog always as friendly as this with strangers? No, be ain't. Something's wrong with him. He ain't no use at all for strangers, usually. We're friends, aren't we, Chris, old boy? Chris, I'm ashamed of you. Masked man, get your hands up like what I said. I ain't fooling. Perhaps you're not, but I think you're mistaken. I know who you are. Your name is Durkin. You're a robbing thief that's come here to bust into the express office. Well, you ain't going to get that chance. Now get your hands up. My name is not Durkin. I'm not here to... In just a minute... Who are you? None of your doggone business. You might be Durkin for all I know. What about that? Me? Why, hang it and blast it all I... Where did you hear about this crook named Durkin? My daughter told me. Her husband's in charge of the express office. Mr. Barton of the Wells Fargo came and warned us that you was around here. Then my girl seen you. I was afraid I'd frightened her. I'm sorry. Being sorry won't help you none. I got Chris on your trail and he found you. Now you're heading for jail. I'm sorry, but I can't go to jail right now. Oh, you can't, eh? Well, you're gone. And what's more, you're taking off that mask. I'll have a look at your face. You said a man from Wells Fargo was here. He is. He's watching for you. I'm sorry he didn't come here instead of you. There ain't nothing he'd do that I won't. Now, I got no more time to waste in talking. You're the father of the man who runs the express office, huh? Father of his wife. Then let me show you something. I think this will identify me. What is it? Here, take a look. Catch. Hey! He got him. Let go of me. Steady there. And don't fire your gun just for the sake of firing it. You might hit the dog. Quiet, boy. He got man. Get him, Chris. Get him. Come back here and get him. Here, yeah, boy. Easy, Chris. I have the dog, Tonto. Take that man's gun away. Uh, we got him. I'll just tie you over here, Chris. We don't want either you or your master to get hurt. I'll get you for this. You won't get away with it. Blasted all to tarnation. I should have known that trick. You tossed me something and jumped me when my eyes was off on you. I wanted to show you who I was, that's all. I'll still show you what I tossed at you. Here it is. A bullet. A silver bullet. Don't mean a thing to me. You're a crook. Your name is Durkin. You're aiming to rob the express office. Now quiet down. You're just letting yourself get all excited about the wrong man. Now let me tell you what I know about Durkin. I won't listen. Very well. Good dog. <laughs> yeah, boy. Well, go on. Go on? What do you mean? What about Durkin? <laughs> That's better. You can let go of him now, Tonto. Just keep his gun so he can't grab it suddenly. And we let him sit down and hear what we have to say. Ah, uh, you sit there. Uh, set, but I'm giving you fair warning. I'll take you into the jail as a prisoner if it's the last thing I do. I'll take you in on general principles till you get that mask off and show your face. Now go on. What about Durkin? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As Barton and Jimmy Stevens waited for night and the expected visit from Durkin, the detective answered Jimmy's questions concerning his work for the company. What you say is downright interesting, Mr. Barton. It sure must be an exciting life, traveling all over the country, protecting the Wells Fargo offices. Interesting, maybe. It's sometimes real dangerous. Now take this man, Durkin. Yeah? I've never seen the man. Don't have any idea what he looks like. Molly gave us a pretty fair description of him. She saw him at the window, you know. Uh-huh. I still think that he'll be afraid to come back tonight. He must know by this time that you're on the job here. Uh, we'll see. That's the best way. Wait and see. I don't suppose he'll show up before dark, will he? Uh, it ain't like that. Jimmy! I'm scared. Scared again, Molly? It's about Paul. He hasn't been back yet. Your father? Yes. Oh, I wish I'd talked to you first, Mr. Barton. I, I shouldn't have let Paul go. Go? Where to, Molly? Well, I, I told him about the face at the window. I was afraid Durkin would kill you if he came here to rob the office, Jim. I told Paul about it. You shouldn't have done that, Miss Stevens. Well, where is Paul? He took Chris. Chris is his old hound, Mr. Barton. Uh. He went out to try and track down this masked man, and he hasn't come back. You don't know where he went? No. Chris picked up the scent outside the office window, then he started off with Paul riding behind to follow him. I don't like that. Maybe we should report to the sheriff's office, Mr. Barton. Not yet. But Paul might be in danger. Maybe he's captured. Maybe he's been shot. Now wait. Let's wait a while. Wait till after we've watched for this thief. If we can capture Durkin, we'll make him tell what he's done with your father. It might be too late then. If it isn't too late now, it won't be too late by morning. I want to get Durkin with the goods. Well, now look here, Barton. I'm less interested in getting Durkin than I am in getting Pop back safe and sound. Oh, that's Chris. Chris, where's... Hi there, Molly. Oh, oh, you're safe, thank goodness. Hey, Pop, you all right? I look to be all right, don't I? Where were you? We thought... That is, I was worried. I told Jimmy and Mr. Uh, Bob... I told them, did you? Huh. What did you learn by your trekking and trailing? Uh, nothing much. I reckon Chris ain't the hound he was five years ago. Well, didn't you find Durkin? Nope. Never seen hiding a hair of him. Well, now that your father is back, we can go ahead with our plans to stand guard here tonight. Yes, I reckon we can. What are your plans? We're staying in the office, Molly, Mr. Barton and I. We'll leave all the lights out and stay on guard here in case that thief comes. Got to get him with the goods, you see, ma'am. You want a boy, Chris? No, we don't want the thief to be scared away until he gets into the safe and gets the cash in his pockets. Then we'll have a good airtight case again him. I shall be. You and your daughter better go home now. Stevens and I will stay here. It'll soon be dark. Then we can look for our visitor to show up almost any minute. <laughs> Ain't the way we used to go after a crook. Now you remember this. Uh, me? You keep that dog chained and don't try to get Dirk in yourself. If you do, there won't be any evidence against him. We'll have to let him go. I'll see that Paul doesn't interfere. Come on, Paul. All right, but I still don't like this way of catching crooks. Come on, Chris. There ain't no use for anything that we can do. Now then, Stevens, we'll make our plans. Whatever you say, Mr. Barton. Let me look that other room over. That's where the safe is. Right. I'll lock this door before we go in there. Good idea. There. Now, come on in here, Barton. You close that door, will you? Yep. There's the safe. Locked? Here. Yeah. Uh, windows there. One there. That's likely the way you'll try to get in. The, the window? Yep. Yeah. Uh, tell you what you'd better do. What's that? Uh, unlock that safe. Uh, unlock it? If but... he has to make enough light to work the lock on the safe, he's likely to see us in hiding here. Yeah, gosh, that's so... I wouldn't have thought of that. You have to think of everything when you're dealing with a smart crook like Durkin. If he tries the safe in the dark and finds that it ain't locked, he may not make any lights. Then it'll be all right for us to wait till he has the cash in his pockets before we grab him. You're right. I'll have the safe open in a minute here. We'll get all fixed before it's real dark. Then we can just wait. Seems to me it'd be smart to let the sheriff in on this. Stevens, when you've been trailing and running down crooks as long as I have... You'll learn that a good many times too many people can spoil the trap. The safest thing is to let nobody know what our plan is. Then there's no chance for a leak, you see? Yeah, it would mean my job if we lost the Sure table. it would. There. It's unlocked. Good enough. Now you crouch under that window and I'll wait under this one, you see? Yeah. When he comes, let him get in. Don't take no measure to stop him. Just keep still. Don't even breathe loud. Wait till he starts making his escape. Then we can grab him. That's it. I want the crook alive, not dead. 
He stole a lot of stuff. And while he lives, there's always a chance we can get some of it back. Whatever you say, Mr. Barton. If shooting is needed, let me do it. Now get to your place and settle yourself in a comfortable position. And keep quiet. Just about an hour. We may have to wait till half the night is through. So don't get impatient. Really? It's mighty tiresome, ain't it? You're quiet. How long is it now, Barton? Quiet. Don't talk. Can't tell when the crook will be sneaking up. Uh, I figure to be two hours now. What's the matter? You getting tired? Go to sleep if you want to. Oh, I ain't sleeping on this job. The minutes passed slowly for Jimmy Stevens. His muscles were cramped, and several times during the third and fourth hour of silent waiting in the dark, he caught himself dozing. Oh, I mustn't sleep on this job. Gotta get the crook. Got to get him. He hardly dared move, afraid that the slightest sound might betray the trap. The fifth hour was torture. At last, Barton's tense whisper broke the stillness. Stevens. Huh? Yeah? Someone moving around outside. There he is. I spotted him sneaking up toward the window on this side. About time. We're ready for him. Remember what I said? Let him get the cash. Yeah, right. I'll follow your lead, Barton. Quiet now. He's moving up close. Jimmy saw the black outline of a man's head and shoulders rise against a square of moonlight at the window. Then he heard the window being opened. A moment later, the shadowy figure faded into the darkness of the room. The floor creaked. Then the door of the safe could be heard opening. A muttered exclamation. It looked good. Jimmy Stevens tensed every muscle, ready for action. The figure appeared once more at the window. Then Barton cried out. All right, I've got you. I'm with you, Barton. Oh. Hey, he slipped away. Get him. He's got out. I'll drill him. I'm half blind. He, he smashed me in the face with something. Missed him. Don't stand aside, Barton. You're blocking me so I can't shoot. I'll get him this time. Don't let him get away. Stevens. Stevens, this is bad break. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. He got away. Can't find my shooting. Why couldn't I have dropped him? Why didn't I shoot to kill instead of trying for his legs? We've got to get after him. Uh, get a light, Jimmy. Get a light going and we'll see for sure if he did rob the safe. Yeah, just a second. I'll have the lamp going. Oh, if you'd only let me jump him while he was at the safe. Now what'll we do? Keep your head, boy. That's the main thing. <laughs> there's the light. And look, he's cleaned out the safe. Oh, that's bad. But don't give up all hope. I'm a good man at trade on a crook. I'll catch up with him. Oh, my job's as good as gone now. Jimmy, the shooting, are you all right? Molly, Molly, the cash is gone. He got away with it. What's that? Got away with it, did he? Yes. How'd that happen, Barton? Jimmy closed in on him and got smashed in the face. Oh, Jimmy. I fired, but missed him. I'll get started after him right away. I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry. You, where was There he is, that's him. Put your hands up. Take it easy. Get the guns from both those men, Tonto. We don't want any shooting here. Uh Oh, Tonto, get guns. You've got plenty of nerve coming back here like this. How did the thief get in and out of here? You ought to know, right through that window. In that case, there should be footprints beneath the window, shouldn't there? They wouldn't be on that side. It's hard ground. It ain't like the other side of the building. But it is. It's all soft now. There was some water spilled there. So the tracks of anyone who went out that window could be seen. What? I explained to your father, Stevens, just who I was. That's right, boy. He told me who he was and who this Mr. Barton was. My name is Barton. I proved that. He got gun now. Very well, Tato. You see, Jimmy and Molly, the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Oh. <laughs> That's right. The Lone Ranger heard a shot last night. Then he heard something splash in the river east of here. He found the trail that Barton's horse had made up to the river, then seen where there'd been a rumpus. Then he found the body of a man that had been shot washed ashore downstream. Well, the tracks of the horse went from the river to here. You can't talk yourself out of this. What did you do with the cash? You keep quiet. Where are you? Quiet. We realized, after steadying the trail of the horse, that the rider was changed at the river. 
One man rode the horse to the river. There was a shot, and a man was killed. The other man rode the horse from the river here. A lot of talk. Quiet. That means that the man who came here killed the man we found. I didn't know who it was until Barton told you that a crook named Durkin was on his way here. Where are you? Go on, mister. Durkin was on his way here and knew that Barton was after him. Durkin's horse gave out. Then Durkin waited, killed Barton and stole Barton's horse and credentials. You mean that the man called Barton is really Durkin? I think so. He figured out a scheme to rob the safe and do it right under your nose. But I saw the... You saw a man rise up against the window. Are you sure the man wasn't in the room all the time? Oh, oh, gee, I I never thought of that. Me and them two know that no one comes through that window. Barton, or Durkin, whatever your real name is, you took the cash and tucked it into your pockets, then made believe you shot at the thief. In the darkness, you struck Jim in the face so he couldn't see what you were shooting at. Very true. If that's not the truth, there'll be footprints outside the window. If my story is true... The cash will be in your pockets right now. Take a look, Stevens. Barton, you dirty double cross and polecat. If that's the truth... Get away from me. You can't do that. Well, there's a hat stuffed inside his vest. The one you saw when he gave his act. And the cash. Oh, Jim. All right, you got me. Now what are you going to do? That's a starter for you, Durkin. If I had a gun, I'd drill you. Well, that's why we took your gun, Jim. Durkin is wanted alive. I'll get charge of that snake. He's got a hanging waiting for him. And by the way, Jim, I think after you prove that he's the crook... You'll find there are some rewards out for his capture. Oh, those rewards are yours. You tell them, old timer. Come on, Tutter. <laughs> you see, the Lone Ranger, he won't take no rewards, Jim. He figures you and me should take them and split them. So that was the Lone Ranger. I'll silver <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.